few days later, a little weary, they are resting on a reef. Just then, a school of little fish swims by. I am going to eat up some of these, says the whale. I'll be back in a minute. And she dives down after them. The whale has not come back. While eating the little fish, she completely forgot her new friends. She is a giddy, thoughtless creature. We were better off on a cannibal island. What will become of us now, weeps poor Celeste. Baba does his best to comfort her. After hours and hours spent on their little reef, without even a drop of fresh water, they finally spy a ship passing quite near them. She is a big steamer with three funnels. Baba and Celeste call out and yell as loudly as they can, but no one hears them. They try signaling with their trunks and with their arms. Oh, will they attract someone's attention? They have been seen. A lifeboat rescues them while the excited passengers all watch. That is a big ship. Uh-huh. A week later, the huge ship steamed slowly into a big harbor. All the passengers go down the gangplank. Baba and Celeste, too, would like to follow, but they are not allowed to. They have lost their crowns during the storm, so no one will believe that they are actually king and queen of the elephants and the captain of the ship orders them locked up in the ship's stables. They give us straw to sleep on, cries Baba angrily. We have fed hay as though we were donkeys. The door is locked. I've had enough of this. I'm going to smash everything. Be quiet, I beg you, says Celeste. I hear someone. It is the captain coming into the stable. Let's be good so he'll let us out. my elephant, says the captain to the famous animal trainer, Fernando, who is with him. I cannot keep them on my ship. I give them to you for your circus. Fernando thanks the captain and leads away his two new pupils. Be patient, Baba, whispers Celeste. We will not remain long with the circus. We will get back to our native land again somehow and see Cornel Cornelius and little Arthur. You want to read? Not yet, thank you. Okay. You let me know. I know. Okay. Now, just at this time, back in the elephant's country, little Arthur has had a mischievous idea. While Rataxis the rhinoceros was having a quiet siesta, Arthur tied a big firecracker to his tail without waking him. Firecracker explodes with a terrific bang, and Rataxis leaps up into the air. Arthur, the scamp, laughs until he nearly chokes. It is really a very mean trick. Rataxis is furious. Cornelius, very worried, goes to find him and says, My dear fellow, I am so sorry. Arthur will be severely punished. He begs for your forgiveness. Get away, old Cornelius, grumbles Rataxis. Don't speak to me of that scoundrel, Arthur. You elephants may think you have made fun of me, but just wait. You'll soon see. What will he do, wonders Cornelius. I feel very uneasy. He was re revengeful and mean. Ah, if only Baba were here. Don't ever tie up firecracker to the tail of a rhinoceros. Yeah. Arthur's kind of dumb, huh? I don't know, maybe. But Baba is now far away playing the trumpet while Celeste dances in Fernando's circus. Celeste looks pretty in that dress. Yes, she does.
One day the circus comes to the town where Baba, when he was young, had met his friend, the old lady. So at night, while Fernando is in bed, Baba and Celeste escape and go to find her, for he has never forgotten her. Baba finds the house easily and rings the bell. The old lady awakes, puts on her wrapper, steps out on, out, steps out on her balcony and calls, Who's there? It is Baba and Celeste, they answer her. The old lady is overjoyed. She has really believed that she would never see them again. Baba and Celeste are happy too, for they will never have to go back to the circus. Soon they will be able to rejoin Arthur and Cornelius. The old lady has promised to help. The old lady lends Celeste a nightgown and a pair of pajamas to Baba. They have just awakened after a sound sleep. Now they are having breakfast in bed, but they are still quite tired after all their adventures. At the circus, their escape has just been discovered. Stop, thief, my elephants have been stolen, cries the excited Fernando. Little ones, oh little ones, where are you hiding? The clowns repeat and look everywhere for them. Baba and Celeste will not be caught again. Here they are on their way to the station with the old lady. They need a few days rest before returning to their own land. So the three of them are going to the mountains to enjoy the fresh air and try a little skiing. Pictures of people skiing. That's Elephants. Now Baba and Celeste have packed away their skis and said goodbye to the mountains. They are leaving by plane to return home. The old lady accompanies them. Baba has invited her as he is anxious to show her his beautiful country and the great forest where one always hears the birds singing. They have landed. The aeroplane has gone back. Baba and Celeste are speechless with surprise. Where are Cornelius, Arthur, and the other elephants? A few broken trees. Is that all that is left of the great forest? There are no more flowers, no more birds. Baba and Celeste are very sad and weep as they see their ruined country. The old lady understands their grief. What do you think happened? I don't know. That's weird. What happened? Well, let's find out.